Hi, I am Suji Maniam, and this is Ovia, and I'm the trainer. And this is Jolene, and I'm the pickaboo. <laughs> and who's this guy? I'm Lucy, the purple, which is not actually in there. <laughs> okay, and what is this guy's? AI for kids. Super kitty style. Yay, thank you guys. You can go now. I'll see you later. Pretty cool, huh? All right. And thank you for coming. This is AI for Kids, as it was introduced by my kids, Ovia and Yalini, and their cat. So what are we going to do in this webinar? We are going to learn what AI is. And we are going to learn what we use AI for. And we are going to have some fun. I'm going to show you guys some videos. You guys are going to play some games. This is going to be really great. So what I'm going to do right now is I want to understand how old you guys are. So look in your Zoom meeting. I'm going to ask you a question. A poll is going to come up. And it's going to ask you two questions. What's your favorite dessert? And how old are you? And you can see the results, what I'm showing you guys. You can see it on the screen. Also see here. <clears throat> Just so you can see, um, see my screen here. Let's see, favorite dessert is ice cream. I am with you guys there. Me too. And most of you are between 10 to 14 years old. That's very good. That's a perfect age to learn about AI. Thank you for filling in the poll. <clears throat> so we're gonna continue. So you can see the cat already. His name is Tea Leaf. He's our cat, and he was born last year, last summer actually, and we adopted him, and he's going to help us make this presentation a really fun one, and you will see a lot of pictures of him in this presentation, right? This is him last summer. How cute is that? He's so, he was so tiny. All right, there we go. Here's Tea Leaf again. And he's, going to, he's asking, what is AI? You know, we talk about AI. This webinar is called AI for Kids, but what is AI, right? What do you guys think AI is? Anyone know? Is it Apple inside? All in? No, it's something else. Let's again ask Tea Leaf for the answer. AI is for artificial intelligence. You can see what, what you're saying here, right? Artificial intelligence. What does it mean exactly? It means computers getting to do really, really smart things. And I'm gonna show you guys what kind of smart things computers do and how they learn to do those smart things. And sometimes, you know, this is called artificial intelligence. Sometimes it's also called machine learning. Maybe some of your moms and dads work in this field already, so you can ask them what they do. Now, let's see what do we use AI for? So I'm gonna ask you guys to think of some applications that you think are powered by AI. Think of something you did today or this week that you think is maybe powered by AI. I'm gonna give you guys a few seconds to think of some answers, and I'm gonna show you my answers, right? So now Tea Leaf is asking you guys, can you think of some application that are AI powered? And you can type on the chat window, I will see your messages and I will read them out. Siri, yes, right? If we have Siri, Alexa, absolutely, yeah? Those are all powered by AI, very good. Ooh, somebody said self-driving cars, that's very good. 
Ja. Yep. Amazon Alexa, Google Mini. Um, Google, yes. You know, if you use Google for search, that is definitely AI powered. Computer that plays chess. Very good. That is too true. Computers playing games. And I'm actually going to show you a couple of videos of computers learning to play games. And robots, absolutely. Very good, guys. Yep, excellent answers. I see them all. All right, so you guys, you guys nailed most of this. So I'm going to show you a few of the answers I prepared, some of the AI applications. All right, you guys named got most of them. You guys watch plenty of YouTube, right? So here's, you know, my kids watching Paw Patrol, all right? So they're watching this and YouTube is recommending what other episodes they might like. And this is basically powered by AI uh, developed by YouTube. And this is called recommendation. What, what, what does it mean recommendations? When you're watching a video, they recommend things for you to watch. Pretty nice, right? So you can see Paw Patrol, and you know some of you may recognize what these are. Right? And YouTube thinks you will like these. Pretty good. Same thing goes for Netflix. If you guys watch Netflix, Netflix also learns from what you're watching, and they will start recommending movies and TV shows for you. You guys see this already, right? And now that a lot of you are at home, schools are closed, I'm sure you are watching a lot of YouTube and Netflix. I'm sure my kids are. <laughs> so this is a definitely handy. All right, so we looked at YouTube and Netflix. Let's talk about, you know, you guys mentioned Alexa. Yeah, Alexa and Google Home, that is very true. So when you guys talk to Alexa, or Google Home, or Siri, or Apple Home, any of these little devices. And when I ask, let's say I ask the question, Alexa, what is the weather today? What's happening is Alexa is sending my query to a big computer in the cloud. And we will talk about what is cloud later, but just trust me for now. And there's an AI software they're running that understands your query. And it realizes, aha, uh -huh, I'm being, you know, I'm asked what's the weather's gonna be like today. And it responds back and say, yes, at your location, it's going to be 70 degrees and sunny. So this is an AI application, right? We talk to Alexa or Google Home or Siri and in the behind the scenes, which you know we don't really see because we only talk to Alexa or, or the Google Home or the Apple Home, there's an AI powering this. Pretty cool, right? And as you would imagine, they are getting very, very smart now. You can ask them even very hard questions and they will know the answer. Let me quickly check the chat messages. Oh yes, question was, uh, will we get the presentation? Yes, I am going to send you the presentation. I'm gonna email you guys this presentation after this is over. So do not worry, you will get all these slides in email that you guys use to sign up. Yep. Very good. So we talked about Alexa. Ooh, this is another thing. I don't know, maybe you guys probably didn't see it, but your mom and dad definitely know this. When you go shopping, especially online shopping, when you, you know, shop on online, like say Amazon or Walmart or any other online shop, they will start recommending things based on what you bought already. So here's an example of our Amazon recommendation. You can see, right? This is a recommendation for our tea leaf. You know, we buy him a lot of treats, he loves treats, and this is his favorite treat right now, Temptations. This is his favorite, favorite treat. And also, <clears throat> he loves greenies. That helps him you know, keep his breath clean. So Amazon, when you go to Amazon, Amazon recommends we buy these because they know we have a cat. So this is a recommendation when you're doing online shopping. Again, powered by AI. Let's do one more thing. Oh, this is a self-driving car. And you, some of you already mentioned this. I don't know if your family has like a self-driving car, like say Tesla, they are very popular now. And you know, here's a picture of Tesla, but take a look at this. Look at this driver when he's driving. His hands are not touching the steering wheel, right? His hands are resting on his lap and the car is driving itself. That is very cool, right? 
Only in the last few years, we started having self-driving cars because AI, again, another you know, AI application has come a long, long way. There's a lot of development happening in AI to make self-driving cars possible. And you know, looking at the poll, right? Most of you are, how old are you guys? You guys are, um, right? You guys are easily, let me see, yeah, 10 to 14 years old. So when you guys grow up, in the next um, four or five years, when you're about to get your license, the cars will drive themselves. You won't probably even have to drive. You can just get in the car and the car will take you where you wanna go. Isn't that cool? Right, so here's some pictures of what you could be doing in a self-driving car, right? You could just sit and have a meeting. Oh, you can just read a book or you can take a nap. I am so looking forward to these days, guys, where I don't have to drive in traffic. And I'm guessing in the next five to 10 years, the cars will be able to drive themselves. And this, will be, and this is something I'm really excited about, self-driving cars. Like I said, most of you, when you, when you come to the you know, driving uh, licensing age, which is I think uh, 16 or 18 years here in California, you'll be, you'll be able to get in the car and the car will drive itself. Pretty cool, huh? So these are all applications for AI. <clears throat> so let's review. What are the AI applications we have seen? If somebody asks you, what do we use AI for? Right, we just saw a few. YouTube, Netflix, recommendations, right? Everybody watches these days. Online shopping, we need to go shopping, how they recommend things to buy, right? Alexa, Google Home, all of these, yeah. And most importantly, and this is what I'm really excited about, self-driving cars. If you have any comments, please go ahead and type in the chat window. So I will, let's, let's take a moment to pause and look at the chat, any, any comments? Ooh, question was, when are we gonna get a robot? Yes, I am waiting for it too. If you guys watch, you know, scientific movies, sci-fi movies, you know, you will, you know, see like a little robot uh, at home that is doing all the work. That can do the dishes, do the laundry, maybe even cook. Hmm, that's a good question. I don't know how long it's going to be before we have a robot in our home. Definitely soon, I hope, because I would definitely love to have a robot that can do dishes. <laughs> that would be awesome. I will definitely pay for the robot. Yeah. Oh yes, and um, uh, talking about robots, right? I mean, yeah, so I see the comments, uh, like in Samsung, they have robots, testing robots, they are running all around the building. Yeah, that is very good. And I also seen um, uh, at Intuit, uh, the company into it, they have little robots that deliver lunch. Uh, you order the lunch on your phone, an app on the phone, and in the in the at the cafeteria they put the put your lunch in this little like a little rover, and it will basically drive itself and bring it to your queue. Yes, the Roomba is a robot as well, right? So because I have a Roomba that cleans the house, those are pretty smart, right? You know you can. You can automatically go and find the dust clean and then also come back and dock back for charging. All right, so the question is how many types of robots? There are so many, like for example, we have robots like Roomba that does one thing. There are robots that work in factories like assembling cars. For example, you know, a lot of the cars now are in assembled by robots, right? And uh, another question was, um, is AI being used in coronavirus? Absolutely, yes. Um, so as you guys know, the reason a lot of you are not going to school now is because of this nasty virus called coronavirus, right? So everybody is working from home, even your parents. And you guys are, schools are closed. You guys are probably doing online classes. That's because of this coronavirus going on right now. It's a very serious one. So there's a lot of AI being applied to figure out what the cure is. People are figuring out how is coronavirus spreading? So they're trying to figure, they're trying to isolate people. And also they're trying to develop vaccines using AI, right? And uh, you can ask your mom and dad to do some research for, for you guys. And uh, the, you, know, you can find a lot of research going on right now for coronavirus. Ooh, hoverboards. 
I like to have one of those, but I'm not sure when we are going to have hoverboards. But that would be very, very cool indeed. <laughs> very good, guys. So we discussed a lot of use cases. And as you guys know, and, and I can see you guys are very excited about this too. So personally, I'm excited about robots and self-driving cars because they are definitely going to change our lives. Good guys, any other questions in the application? Again, you know, if you, if you like, you can type in the chat window. I'll, I'll check the chat window periodically. Yeah. Ooh, flying cars. If anybody watch uh, Back to the Future, flying cars, hmm. that is a long, long time away. Yes. I don't know, maybe not in my lifetime, maybe in your kids. You know, you guys are, you know, maybe in your lifetime. Uh, question is, are phones considered AI? Great question. So phones have a lot of applications that have AI behind them. So for example, if you have an, you know, if you have an iPhone and you unlock your iPhone with your face, remember you can unlock your iPhone just by looking at it. What's happening is, is recognizing your face. And that is definitely AI powered, right? And for example, if you take a picture on, on your phone and you know, these days you can apply these smart filters, uh, they will correct for color and shadows. Those are also developed by AI, right? Very interesting. So your phone already has a lot of AI applications. And the most obvious one is in your phone when you speak to Siri or, you know, or Google or uh, you know, Android, if you have a Google phone, that is AI too, right? When you speak, what they do is they send your voice to the cloud. Again, I keep saying cloud, just you know, trust with me, it, uh, it goes to the cloud and then they give you the answer. So for example, if you ask Google phone, uh, call home, right? They know how to do that because the AI understands what you're, what you're talking about. Very good guys. So let me also look at the questions, please. Let's so run very quickly. Anyway, so I have some questions answering. Let me check those two. Give me one second. Yep. Uh, oh, thank you. So one of the comments is, love the cat. <laughs> thank you, we love him too. He's a little rascal, but uh, yeah, he, you know, he's, we love the cat, yes. And, and you will see more, more of him soon. Very good, guys. I think we kind of answered a lot of your questions. Oh yeah, Google Translate, that's very good. So I don't know if you guys use um, uh, Google to do translation, like for example, translating from English to Spanish, that is absolutely done using AI. And those are very, in the last few years, we use Google Translate, they have come a long, long way, right? They are very accurate now because they are using AI behind the scenes to translate, let's say you to English and they want to translate in French or Spanish, it's all done using AI. Yeah, yeah, very good. Pretty cool guys, right? So now we looked at a lot of use cases where AI is being used. Yeah, all right. So we are gonna continue on and we'll take another break and chat, check sub chat messages. Okay, so this is good. You guys have pretty, you guys give me pretty good ideas and good questions about the AI applications. Okay, I wanna make sure you guys can hear me okay. Yep, all that is good. Okay, now the question is, how do we train this computer? How does the computer become so smart? The answer is, we train it, right? So I'm gonna show you guys a, a cool video my kids, uh, my kids did for this uh, webinar. It's gonna show you guys, how do we train robots? Hi, this is Ovia and Pikabot. <laughs> They're gonna demonstrate how a robot learns to do things. All right. Hi, Ovia. What are you going to do? We're going to teach little Peekabot here Peek to identify fruit and sort it in different categories. Cool. All right. All right. Let's get started. Okay. So first we are going to train on an apple, a red apple. There we go. You have a red apple. 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 Okay. Apple. Round. Red. Good. Another apple. Ooh. Apple. Apple. Round red. Mm-hmm. Now let's do a banana. 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 
Hmm. Yellow and curvy. Curvy, curvy. good. All right, put in the banana pile. All right. Good. Banana. Another banana. banana. Now the training is done. Yes? Yep. Please. Think about it. Has done how to sort apples and bananas. All right, let's test with the red apple, please. What is this, Peekabot? Apple. Red, round. Red and round. Very good. Okay, goes into the apple pile. Let's give her a banana and ask her what it is. All right, Peekabot, what is this? Ooh, why is it a banana? Because it's yellow and curvy. Yellow and curvy, very good. All right, put it in the banana pile. Now we are going to play a trick on the robot. We are going to show her a green apple. What is this? Don't know. You don't know? Why? But it's round, but it's not red. It's round, but not red. That's right. See, the robot hasn't seen this apple. Because the robot thinks apple is round and red. The robot hasn't seen a green apple. Hmm, that's apple. So what is this? Green and round. Green and round. Good. All right. Put on the apple Let pile. The robo has seen an apple. So now you're going to test the robo again. Say, what is this? It's like, what is this? Apple, green and round. Ooh, so now the robo can identify an apple, even though it's green and round. So as you can see, apples have a unique round shape and they can be green or red. Very different from bananas. Now we are going to trick the robot again. Let's try giving her something different. Yes. What is this, Peekabot? Don't know. You don't know? Because Peekabot has never seen this. Oh, I see. She never seen this orange. All right, so we have to train her. Okay, so show her. Teacher, there's an orange. 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 So what is an orange? Think about. Um, it's a fruit that's round and orange. Round and orange, very Obviously nice. Obviously orange because its name is orange. <laughs> All right, okay, put it in the orange pile. Different than apple and banana. Okay, yeah. think about. So t t tell us what you learned so far. I learned that apples can be either red or green. Uh -huh. Oranges can be different size and dark. Light orange and darker orange. Mm -hmm. Bananas are all the same, except some have more brown than the others. Some have no, no brown and some have green. So they are yellow and curvy. What is this? Beep, 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 beep. Orange! Ooh, why is it an orange? Round, shade of orange. Very nice. Otherwise, it wouldn't be called orange. <laughs> All right, put it in the orange pile, please. All right. And that's all, right. all the fruit we taught Peekabot today. All right, so Peekabot. Pikachu! All right, over here. And, and Peekabot. Thank you. Very cool. They had a lot of fun making this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this too. Did the video make sense? <clears throat> right, I wanna make sure we understand the video. So this is how we train. Remember, I'll kind of, you know, kind of play the video, I'll just zip through the real quick. Right, I'll turn off the sound. So remember, so initially we are training the robo on apples and bananas. But for apples, the robo only has seen red apples, right? Then we played a trick on the robot. We said we gave her a green apple and then asked the robot what it is. See, at this point, you can see Robo can correctly identify red apples and bananas. But for green apple, Robo doesn't know the answer. Why is that? Because the robot never seen the green apple before. So then what we do is we train the robot again, but this time also showing the green apple, right? So that's what happened. So we trained the robot. Okay, this is a green, this is an apple. So now the robot learns apples can be like this. They have a unique round shape. 
but they can be either red or green, right? So at this point, now the robot can identify red apples, green apple, and bananas. Then we are playing a trick on the robot again. We are showing the robot an orange. So the robot cannot identify an orange either because why? It hasn't seen the orange before. So same thing, right? What do you have to do? We have to train the robot again. Now we are trained, you see, we are training the robot with oranges. And once the training is done, what is training? Right? What are we, what are, when you say training, what do we mean? We teach the robot, we show the robot what the fruit is and tell it what it is, right? One of very simple terms. We are showing the robot, okay, robot, this is an orange. That's it, it's called training. There we go. So now the robot has figured out three kinds of fruits, apples, that can be red or green, oranges that are round and orange, and banana, yellow and curvy. Now we ask the robot, what do you think this fruit is? So we are showing them an, you know, showing an orange now, right? And the robot correctly identifies it as an orange. Pretty cool, huh? So this is how robots learn. We train them, and then from the training, they learn. Any questions, guys? Hopefully you guys enjoyed watching the video and hopefully you heard the sound okay. Any questions so far? Let's take a minute to answer any of your questions you have. So if you have any questions, please type them in your chat window. I'll see them here. Ooh, so there we go. Let me read the comments here. You're saying yes, there are yellow apples too. Yep, absolutely. Apples come in all shapes and sizes and also colors. So in, the, in this instance, so what do you guys think? So here we show the, the bot only, right? Green and red apple. But if you show them a yellow apple, will it recognize? No, right? We have to train it again. Exactly. So this is how robots learn. We train and train and train with a lot of examples and they get pretty smart. Yeah. So your self-driving car, right? Your car is driving, this is how it's trained. But of course the training is much more complex because it has to understand what's on the road. It has to learn to recognize, say for example, stop signs, uh, lane marking, stop lights, pedestrians, right? So, so identifying this fruit is a very simple example of how robots train. Isn't that cool? <laughs> so the question is, what if I show the robo a peeled orange? That is interesting. Only thing is we have to try and see, right? Because sometimes it may recognize if the peeled orange is still orange and round, it may say, yes, this is an orange. But if we show it an orange slice, it may not recognize it because it thinks oranges are round and orange. So if you show like an orange wedge, it may not recognize it. Pretty cool, right? So another question is, what if I show a robo red ball? Ooh, that's interesting. Would it think it's an apple? Maybe. But remember, apples are not perfect round, right? They have like a little odd shape. So maybe the robo will remember a ball has a ball is a perfect round shape. So maybe the robo will say, hmm, that's not an apple because apples have a unique shape, right? They're round, but not, they're not perfect round. Yeah. Very cool guys, right? So, uh, so we talked about showing a red ball, peeled oranges. Uh, yeah, this is, this is how robots are learning to play chess and you know, other games. Um, what if you're a yellow boomerang? Ooh, that's interesting. What, what do you guys think would happen if, if, the, if I show a robo a yellow boomerang? Do you think it's going to think it's a banana? <laughs> Maybe. The only way to be sure is by testing the robo by showing the boomerang. Right? Exactly. So when, when the robo is learning, and this, this is what the, the video is about, right? The robo learns by examples. So the more examples you show to the robo, the better it learns. That's exactly, yeah. So now 
The reason AI has advanced so much in the last few years is we are, we are training our robots and AI system with so much data. So they get smarter and smarter and smarter. Oh, somebody asked me, what would happen if I show a pomegranate? I would definitely think the robot will say, I don't know, because it hasn't seen the pomegranate before. Now, if we want the robot to identify a pomegranate, we have to train the robot showing a few pomegranates and then say, this is a pomegranate. And once the robot has learned, then it'll learn pomegranate, yeah? All right, guys, I think I got most of the chat windows answered. Um, let's see. Again, I will check the chat pretty frequently and I will send you guys this video uh, so you can see the video. And we had a lot of fun making this video. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this too. Okay. Pretty cool. All right. <laughs> so, okay. So let's continue and I have a few more slides I want to show you guys and we have a game coming out. So I don't want to take too long now because I want to give you guys time to play this game. All right. So how to train a robot or how to train an AI, All right? We have seen this video, very good. Now, I'm gonna show you guys another demo of a robot playing a game. This is interesting. So let me show you guys this, right? So this is a YouTube video. I'm gonna just show you, the, I'm gonna sh um, show you guys what's happening. So this is a Google's uh, AI system. It's called Deep Mind. And this one to learn, learn to play a game called Breakout. Now, you guys are too young. You probably haven't seen this game, uh, but your parents I'm sure have seen this game. I have. This used to be a very famous arcade game. Okay, because I'm wondering what is an arcade, uh, you should ask your mom and dad. Anybody go to Chuck E. Cheese's, right? Or any, any other uh, video game arcades? So when we were growing up, you know, when I say we, as in like your mom and dads were growing up, we didn't have computers. We had arcades. So we would go to the arcades and play a game. And this is a very classic game called Breakout. The way it works is, see the rainbows? They are bricks. So you have a little ball and like, like playing ping pong and you have a little paddle at the bottom. You're supposed to hit the ball and break the bricks. And when you break the bricks, you get points. You know, here are your points, right? you will get points. So what happened was we gave this game to the robot to play, to say, hey, go play this game. Imagine if I gave this game to you guys and I didn't give you any instructions. How will you play this game? How will you learn this game? You will just, you know, you will try your, you know, pushing a few buttons, right? try a few things and then see uh, if the game works, right? So that's exactly what the robot is doing right now. So it's been, it's been trying for 10 minutes, right? So it's been playing this game for 10 minutes and it, it still hasn't figured out. It, it still hasn't figured out it needs to move a paddle and hit the ball to break the brick, right? Still learning. Remember, I didn't tell the robot anything about the game. I just gave the game and said, go, you know, go figure this out. Now it's been playing this game for 120 minutes. Now, how much is that in hours? Can somebody do the math for me? 120 minutes, how many hours is that? Yep, 60 minutes an hour. So this is two hours. So the, now the robot has been trying for two hours. See how, let's see how it, how it does, right? So it's been, play, it's been playing for two hours. Now it figured out the game. It says, aha, I should move the paddle, hit this ball, and break the brick. And you can see the score is going up, right? So as you break the bricks, score keeps going up. That is good. So the, now the robo has, is playing pretty decently. This is good, but it doesn't stop there. It's been, we let, let the robo keep playing and it discovered a new trick. So now it's been playing for 240 minutes. Again, can somebody do the math for me? How many hours is that? Right, four hours. So it's been playing this game for four hours. Let's see what happens. Let me show you guys the, the trick it learned. So advanced players learn a trick. So remember, so when you break the brick, you get points. The advanced trick is you have to build a tunnel. As in like you have to, you have to, you have to, you have to create a tunnel by breaking the bricks at the same spot. 
and send the ball to the other side, other side of the wall. That's when you get really, really huge bonus points. And this is an advanced level play. And I did not tell the robo about this, but the robo kind of figured it out automatically by playing the game over and over and over again. So watch what it's doing, okay? So it's gonna build a tunnel on your left side. So watch the left side. See how it's gonna keep hitting the ball at the same side, trying to build a tunnel. Let's see, it's almost, with the, there we go, right? See, now it built the tunnel by hitting the ball in the same spot over and over again. So it broke in the bridge, uh, bricks, and then built the tunnel, now send the ball to the other side. But look at the score. Wow, right now scores are in hundreds. And then on this one, see, you can see the scores like 200, 300, right? So, so that's how robots learn. And if you say, okay, what's the big deal? I can do this too. Exactly, that's exactly the point. Now, now the robot, is learning just like humans, right? So you guys saw how well it did, right? And in maybe two hours, it figured out how to play a decent game, but in four hours, it even play, figured out a neat trick, building a tunnel, right? So, so this is what we are doing these days. We are training the robots like humans, how we humans learn. Let me show you another cool video. This is robots learning to play hide and see. Let me get this video up, there you go. Again, all the links for the videos will be in the slides. Okay, let me set up the game here. This is the classic game of hide and seek, right? You guys have all done hide and seeks and you can advance the video a little bit, all right? Okay, so this is the game starts. So you have blue team, right? These guys here and the red team. One second, let me uh, check the chat windows real quick. Yeah, very good. Right, so the, these videos are actually on YouTube. The videos I'm showing you guys right now, um, these are on YouTube. Uh, I will send you guys the links for these when I send out the slides. Yes, so the, no, these are not my videos, yes. So the question is, yes, these two teams are robots. We have a red team and the blue team. So the blue teams are the hiders, they had to go and hide. The red team are the seekers. We all played hide and seek, right? You guys know how the game works. So the idea is the blue team has to go and hide and the red team has to go and find them. If the red team finds them, they win. So let's see the first few rounds. So blue team is trying to hide, they're hiding behind the boxes, right? The red team sees them. See, when, you, when they see them, you sort of see the, like a laser light light, right? There we go, right? When the red team sees like a, you know, when you see the, like a laser light, that means the team has won. So the red team has been winning all the time because they're able to find these guys. So now the blue team has to come up with the, with the technique. Remember, these are robots, right? We didn't tell them anything. They are learning this game by themselves. And they're playing the game over and over and over again, trying to see what, what we can do differently. So look at this, look at this map. See, there's like a two entrances right here, like walls, right? This is a room. There are two entrances. Now the blue team has figured out, you know what? Hey, let's block the entrances so the red team cannot enter. Watch this. See, they are moving the boxes. And that's it, da-da. <laughs> now the red team cannot go inside. So blue team wins. And they figured this out how to do this, how to block the entrances all by themselves. Isn't it pretty cool? All right? So it's an over. Okay, you're gonna, so now the red team is losing every time. So now they have to figure out something. Hmm, how can I win this game? All right? So see this arrow pointing at this little wedge, like a slide? The red team is gonna do something smart with this. Watch this, right? So the blue team blocked the entrance. Now the red team is moving the slide and they can use the slide to climb over the wall and then say, da-da, I see you. Pretty cool, huh? Watch this again. See, they are moving the slide. Now the blue team, even if they block the entrances, <laughs> the red team can jump over the wall and show ya, right, and see them. Now the red team is winning every round because they are using the slide to jump over the wall. Now the blue team sees this too. They're like, hmm, we need to do something about this slide and see what they are doing, all right? So now blue team has learned how to defeat the red team. See this, okay? See what they are doing, okay? 
<laughs> did you see what they did? Say so now the blue team realized the red team is using the, the slide to jump on the wall. So what they are doing is they are going and stealing the slide, bringing it in, locking it, locking it inside the room. And then they are blocking the entrance. Now the red team has no way of jumping over the wall. Blue team wins, right? Look at this. Isn't it pretty cool? I see. Blue team is going and bring the slide and they are locking it in place. So pretty cool, right? So these are robots learning to do simple things. And I mean, you guys will say, sure, I know how to play, you know, uh, hide and seek. But this is computers or robots learning to do this just like we learn. And that is very exciting. So right now, you know, there's a lot of research going on on teaching robots how to think like humans. And this is one of them, right? So they are playing a simple game like hide and seek. But as you can see, even here in the simple game, there are a lot of techniques they are learning right so they are learning teamwork so meaning you know they have to block the entrance at the same time because imagine if one one robot blocked one entrance and the other robot did not do that the red team will come through the entrance so they have to work as team right to block the entrances together and you can see they also learn a clever trick they took away the slide from the red team they locked in the slide all these things they learn on their own how do they do this we let them play this game so many times, millions of times, right? They play this game millions and millions and millions of times, and then they learn slowly. But once they start learning, they learn very quickly, right? So pretty good, right? So um, I'll stop here and see if we have any questions in these two videos. Let's go to the chat window real quick. So again, guys, um, I can only look at the chat windows, you know, during, during this break. So yeah, yeah, very good. So these are YouTube videos. If sometimes, you know, the, if they, if it's a little blurry, I will send you guys these videos. You can look at them, right? Um, so don't worry. Uh, these are fairly recent videos. Uh, I'll send you the link. Oh, these are done by a company called OpenAI, right? They do a lot of research in, um, in AI. Uh, and 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 this this is called hide and seek. A robot was playing hide and seek. Yeah, yeah. I will send you guys a video. So if you, when you guys get the slides, you will um, right. You will see you know, the slides. Will be, I have a link, uh, and for the videos and the research papers. Right. So the video is a lot of fun. I highly recommend you guys watch this video. Sometimes the video can be blurry on your iPad, but uh, you should see it again. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, so I'm reading the chat, chat guys. So go ahead and type in your questions there. Exactly, yeah, they're like little hamsters, right? <laughs> so they're trying and playing the game. But they're learning the game right here. This is the important part. They're learning the game by themselves. Nobody is teaching them. And this is pretty big deal. Okay. So who, who discovered AI? Oh, AI is a very, very long uh, history. People tried to do AI in 1950s. But you know, not successfully because you know, our computers were not powerful. But now we have very powerful computers and AI because AI needs a lot of, lot of computation power. Let me show you guys this. And that's a good question to go to the next section, right? So the reason we are doing a lot of AI right now is we have a lot of compute power because you know, we are, our computers are very, very powerful and we have lots and lots of computers. So take a look at only how, right? You probably have a laptop or a tablet. And that's what we do our daily things, right? You, you're probably taking a class on your laptop or on your tablet. Your parents are probably checking email on, you know, on their laptops. So those are fine. And here's Tea Leaf, you know, trying to play with our laptop, right? And he, he loves playing with our laptops. He loves, you know, pushing the keys. Um, but AI needs lots and lots of compute power, which we cannot do on a laptop. So we need really big computers. So that brings us to something called a cloud, right? So what is a cloud? And I mentioned this word cloud a few times for you guys. So let's talk about what is this cloud? Now, when I say cloud, you guys might think this. Yes, this is a cloud, but this is what we call a natural cloud, right? They are, they are usually white and puffy, and if it's raining, it's raining gray and rainy. Yes, those are clouds, but when we talk about it in computer terms, computer cloud, we don't mean these. What we mean is, these huge warehouses 
filled with computers. So you can see this, right? So if you see each little box right here, let me draw one here. See this, this little guy is one computer. And you, you see there are so many computers stacked on top of each other. And this is one, this, this thing is called one rack. So they all rack together. And you see there are so many racks, right? As far as your eyes can see. And each rack probably has 10, 20 computers stacked on, on, stacked on them. So these are called data centers. It's like a big warehouse filled with computers, right? So you can imagine your school. Can you imagine all your rooms in your school filled with computers? That's what we are talking about. These are called data centers, meaning they house computers. And these can be truly massive. Let me show you an, I, I, now, right? Let me show you an idea of how massive they can be. See, here's a picture of a data center. See, somebody's actually riding a bike in the data center. That's how big they are. They are huge, huge warehouses full of computers. Do you guys ride a bike in your home? No, right? Probably it's not big enough. Do you ride your bike in your school? Maybe not. I mean, that is not big enough, right? But data centers, you can be really, really huge. You so see this big, big room full of computers, and there are thousands or even millions of computers. So this is what we call a computer cloud. What is a computer cloud? Is lots and lots of machines stored in a warehouse and they are working together, right? So, and these, these data centers for the cloud, you know, cloud um, uh, computer cloud, they use, as you can see, they use lots and lots of power, right? Because there are so many computers, they all use power. And, and that's why you will find, you'll find like a lot of the data centers now have solar panels on the top because this, you know, they want to make some uh, energy from the sun. Some of them even have windmills to produce electricity because these guys draw so much power, right? If you think how much power your home uses, your televisions, you know, your dishwashers, your microwaves, these guys use so much, so much more power than a home. Right? So data center, so now you guys know what a data center is, right? It's basically a warehouse full of so many computers. And this is what we say when we mean cloud, right? So when we say we are sending data to the cloud, right? We don't mean the puffy, puffy clouds like here. No, these are, these, are, these are like, you know, cloud, cloud. What we mean is computer cloud. So here's a picture of, you know, data going in, right? You can still sort of see here from our computers, from our tablets, from our laptops, our data is going to the cloud. What is a cloud? Cloud is lots and lots of computers stored in a, in a data center or a warehouse. So next time you take a photo on your phone, or you write a tweet, or you send an email, those are basically sent to quote unquote cloud, a computer cloud. Why do we need these clouds? Because we need so much compute power to train our AI programs. So the reason AI is becoming very smart these days, right? When you talk to Alexa, when you do translate using Google Translate, I, I just showed you guys a couple of videos, uh, AI playing video games they need so much compute power to train on. And that's why we are building this massive, massive uh, data centers with how so many computers. Cool. So now you just know what a cloud is, right? When somebody says cloud, you should say, yeah, 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 I know what a cloud is, not the puffy cloud, but the computer cloud. So when the next time you take a photo on your iPhone, it's going to the cloud like this. Make sense, guys? Any questions on this one? Let me check the chat window real quick. Um, yeah. So, so the reason it's called cloud is like kind of like, you know, it's like, you know, it, it's not, the reason it's not sitting, cloud is like almost you can think it's like it's sitting in the cloud. It's like in a, somewhere remote, we don't see it. But when I take a picture, is going to this, you know, some this data center located somewhere. I don't see it, so that's why it's called a cloud, right? So I know it's kind of a funky name, but you know, it's what it is, right? So when somebody is saying we are sending data to the cloud, what they mean is they are sending the data to these massive data centers, right? Companies are building, companies like Google, Amazon, Apple, they're all building huge, huge data centers, right? Huge buildings full of um, computers. They store and process your data. So these are some of the things we only started having in the last 10 years. And that's why robots and AIs are becoming more and more powerful. Yeah. 
All right, so very good. Now, this is a fun part, and this is to, we are towards the end of our webinar, and I'm gonna end this with a very fun game. I don't know if you guys have seen this before. This is called Quick Draw. Now, I'm gonna give you guys, in the chat window, I'm gonna give you guys a URL. So if you have, um, if you have um, um, your parents sitting next to you, um, help them, um, ask them to get you there. So the URL is called Quick Draw. Let me, show, let me do the URL first. The chat window, look at the chat window. And if you click on the URL, you will get to this page. So what we are gonna do is we are going to, um, we are gonna draw some shapes and the computer is going to guess what you're drawing. It's a game. It's a really, really fun game, All right? And so we play it at home, right? So here's T-Leaf asking, hey, can you play this game? And look at the chat window, guys. I put the URL here. And if you just simply click on the link, it's gonna take you to this page. It's called Quick Draw, okay? Let me show you guys how this game is playing. Uh, game is played. And we have a lot of fun playing this game, right? Here you can see, right? Um, Ovi and Yalni, they, play, they compete against each other with this quick draw. Let me show you guys how this game is played. So I hope you guys are already in this page and I'll give you some time to do this, but you know, can I watch my screen for now? All right? So click on the let's draw button. So see how the computer says, draw a saw and I have 20 seconds. So it's a game, right? So I had to draw a saw in 20 seconds. All right, let me see if I can draw this, okay? And you can probably hear the sound also. Let me see what I'm doing. Just watch, watch my screen now. I see bench or diving board. Oh, I know, it's saw. Ta-da, I got it, all right? Hmm, draw peas. This I'm not sure. Okay, let me start drawing peas and let's see if, if I get successful. Let me see. I see circle or hockey puck or roller coaster or eyeglasses. Oh, I know, it's peas. You guys see that? So as I keep drawing, it'll keep guessing and if I get it right. All right, let me draw our glass. This, this is easy, I know how to do this. I see hockey puck or pool or nail. Oh, I know, it's our glass. Ta-da. Ooh, sweater. Interesting, let me see if I can draw sweater. Um, I see ocean or line or flamingo or bird or hammer. Oh, I know. It's sweater. See, I didn't even finish drawing this, but it, it, it figured out I'm drawing a sweater. Pretty smart, right? Oh, whoa, this is gonna be tricky. Okay, let me see if I can draw an owl. How will I draw an owl? Big owl. I see circle or moon. I see donut. I see cookie. Big. Oh, I know, it's owl. <laughs> oh boy, how do we draw a great wall of China, guys? All right, let me try. I'm gonna just draw a wall and see if this works. I see ocean or garden hose or river or beach. I see bridge or mustache or canoe or mouth. I see shoe or banner or bed or cruise ship or book. I see cooler. Oh, I know. It's the Great Wall of China. Yay. All right, so I actually got six out of six, which is, you can see, I, I gathered six. Now, this is what you guys are gonna do now. Let's take a minute. You guys are gonna actually draw this, compete, compete, and you guys are gonna tell me if you get how many of the six you got right. It's very hard to get six out of six because some of the drawings can be very challenging, all right? All right, guys, so let's all have some fun. Let's kind of draw this. Again, look at your chat window. I'm giving you a link. You can simply click on the link to go to this page, all right? So next one or two minutes, we are gonna have Everyone, I want everyone to have fun. And tell me how many you got. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring up a poll. It's gonna say how many you got, all right? All right, guys, let me bring up a poll here. Now have fun, okay? So we are all doing quick draw now. All right, and I'm asking you a little poll. How many out of six, how many did you get right? You can type in the chat window or you can also put it in the, the poll. This is so much fun, right? All right, guys, so we are playing for a minute. 
Uh, it works very well on your tablets. If you have an iPad or an Android pad, it, it works really well. Or you can on your laptop. It works again. Let me put the link again, guys, just so you know if you're wondering where the link is. Look at the chat window, right? And it's called uh, Quick Draw. So much fun, right? So you can do a search for Quick Draw as well. If you do a Google search for Quick Draw, you will find this page. Yes, you see what I'm sharing? Yes, guys, go ahead and type in your questions. You can either type in Q&A or in the chat window. Either way is fine. Oh, yes, we are recording this meeting, and I'm going to send you the recording after this webinar, right? Yeah, definitely. You, you will definitely get this recording, guys. Don't worry. So right now, have fun. Let's go quick draw. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, so now that you guys are doing the, uh, I'm gonna do this poll one more time because some of you got started late, all right? So let me do the poll one more time, guys, okay? So if you voted already, please vote again. I'm running the poll one more time, just so everybody has a chance to vote. Ah, oh, look at you guys. A lot of you guys got six. You guys are much better than much better at this than I am. <laughs> Very sure. I see, and also I see your chat, chats as well. So yeah. Um, if the page is blocked, um, because sometimes it's, you know, uh, just reload the page again, and you should see it. Uh, it's usually, I mean, it's supposed to be Google, you know, so it's very scalable. Uh, it should work. Uh, if it's blocked, uh, there may be something else going on, but it should work for you guys without any issues. So once you guys play this game, I will explain how this is working, right? This is really fun, isn't it? Oh, <laughs> I forgot about zero as a choice. Oh, wow. Yes, yes, I should next time. All right, guys, let me end the poll here. Looks like a lot of you, a lot of you played this game. That's very fun. So let me show the results to you guys. All right, so you can see I'm sharing the poll results with you guys. Okay. And looks like, look at you, right? Most of you got six. All right, that's very good. So this is fun. Um, what we do at home, now you know, kids are home. I'm sure you guys are home too. We play this game a lot. So here's a, so what I recommend, so here's, you know, uh, my kids Obi and Yalni, you know, they, they love this game. So here's my scorecard, right? So what we do is we play this game a few times. So here you sort of say, you know, we played five times and we're pretty even, but in one round, Obi, I got six, I got five, and then she won the game. So this is what I'm gonna to recommend to you guys. You know, I know if you guys are, you know, your schools are closed, you guys are home. If you wanna break, play this game. It's even more fun if you play with somebody else, do like a little competition, right? Maybe you have your brother and sister, or even with your parents. Because I can bet, like you can see from me, right? Ovia beat me, because you know, she's a very good drawer. <laughs> so play this game, like say four or five times and tally up your scores, and you'll see uh, how much fun this is. Well, quick draw, right? So hopefully you guys, you know, got something fun out of this. It's a really fun game for you guys to um, right? um, play during your break. But how does it work, right? So let's see how this works because this is pretty amazing, right? The way it works is, so if you go to the, um, let me let me close this guys, okay, and close all these windows. I'm going to show you guys how this works. So in the quick draw page, you can click on this link. It shows you like all the, all the doodles people have drawn, 
right? So you can see here, so if you click on a plane, airplane, you will see all the airplanes people have drawn. So see this, I mean, this is all the ways people have drawn an airplane. And you can see, right, there are lots and lots of different shapes. So it's the same thing. Remember the video we, you know, we trained the robot to recognize an apple and an orange and a banana? Same thing. So the robot is trained to recognize shapes as airplanes or apples or whatever, right? And what it does is it tries to recognize different shapes. Because remember, remember in our, in our example, there are a lot, there are different bananas, different apples. Same thing here, right? So it, as people are drawing different shapes, the robot is trying to recognize, is trained to recognize different shapes. So let's do an apple, see right here, see an apple. Let me see how many ways people draw an apple, see? You see, these are all different shapes of apple. Pretty cool, right? So just like we did in the training video, but this is done at a much, much larger data set. So they have, let's see how many, oh wow, they have 50 million drawings. Isn't it amazing? So the robot is training on 50 million drawings. And as you guys play, right, when the robot's asking you to do, you know, like, you know, draw like an apple, when you're drawing, you are adding, you are giving it more data. So let's say, you know, uh, you know, you are drawing, a, let's say a backpack, right? So you can see there are, you know, so many backpacks people have drawn. You can see, right, different, different shapes. Now, if you're, if you're drawing matches, any of these, the robot will say, aha, I know, this is the backpack. Pretty cool, huh? Anyway, so play the game. Uh, some, you know, uh, some of them are very challenging, right? For example, once I got a, um, um, uh, robot asked me to draw animal migration. What is animal migration? Ooh, how do you draw that, right? So some of them can be very, very hard. Anyway, have fun with this one. Have fun, you know, play with your friend, play with your parents, right? It's a lot of fun. Very good, guys. So let's see if you have any other questions. Uh, let's see in the chat. If you have any questions, please type them in the chat window. Okay. All right, I'm gonna, uh, yeah, I have a couple more slides. I'm gonna finish this up and then we will take your questions. So this is called quick draw, right? So let's review, guys. What have we done so far? We learned what is an AI is. AI stands for artificial intelligence, meaning computers are learning to do smart things. And what are the applications? You guys gave me a lot of examples. So we are looking at AI applications. You guys gave me great examples. YouTube, self-driving cars, recommendations, Siri, Alexa, all these guys, right? And then we had a lot of fun watching how do we train computers. Remember the video? We were training the robot on a very simple task of recognizing fruits, apples, bananas and oranges. And then we learn what is a cloud. It's not a natural cloud, like you, you know, see in the sky, that when you say in computers, when we say cloud, we mean huge amount of computers sitting in a warehouse somewhere, right? And, you know, we, and I showed, showed you guys pictures of you know, how massive these warehouses are. They are huge buildings full of computers, right? And then we saw some cool demos, remember the demo? The computer is learning to play the brick game and is learning to play the um, hide and seek. And then you guys had a demo too, right? You guys played quick draw. Learn, you know, draw, uh, draw doodles and the computer recognized the doodles, right? So I'm gonna take questions, but before that, I'm gonna show you guys a couple more next steps. So now you're excited about, I hope you guys are excited about AI because AI is gonna do some really, really great things in the next coming years. So how do you learn more? Couple of options. If you are less than 10 years old, I would recommend um, you just check out Tinker. Tinker is T-Y, right? Tinker is a very nice environment or a game that you can learn to program robots. So much fun, right? Probably your school already has it. So maybe you can ask your teacher. And one thing I know is during the school closures right now, the Tinker is actually free. So you can ask your parents to get an account and you can learn how to code, code robots. So you can do some pretty cool stuff like you can move a robot, right? You can, you can have a drag and fly. So Tinker check out. If you are sort of, you know, about less than 10 years old, I would check out Tinker. If you're a little older, the 10 to 15 years old, I will definitely start looking at learning something called Python. 
Yes, it's a funny language, funny name for a language, right? It looks, looks like a, a snake, right? You see the, see the image, it looks like a snake, but it's a programming language. Python is a very popular programming language uh, for AI. If you are doing AI work, we are doing it in Python now. Right? So it's very, very um, um, good skill to have. If you are a teenager, uh, if you have some, some, if you know, if you are pretty familiar with computers, I would highly recommend you guys look into Python. And you can, you know, you can ask your parents to do some search online. There are a lot of Python classes that are going on. Um, as a matter of fact, um, I'm going to be teaching a very um, uh, a Python class next week uh, for students. So if you are like, you know, over, over 10, 12 years old, uh, please ask your parents to sign up. I will send you the details. Uh, and this is a this is a Python class. We are going to introduce Python to you guys how to learn basic Python, and we'll try to make it fun. Just like you know, just like this um, uh, this webinar, right? So I'll, again, I'll send you guys the details and the class is starting next week. And, and it's gonna be a free class, so you can sign up. Um, good, so, and so now it's time to say goodbye. Here's Tilly, right, here's snoozing. Uh, if you guys were curious about AI, there are a couple of things you guys can do. Uh, my company, Elephant Scale, we run a lot of free classes. And especially now, because Everybody's working from home. You know, even your parents are working from home. So we are running classes for kids and parents. So you can sign them, sign up for classes at our website. And I'll also going to send you guys email about the Python class that is starting uh, next week. Uh, so it's going to be a fun class. All right. So now let's pause, and that's the end of the presentation. And if you have any questions, let's go ahead and um, uh, type them in the chat window, please, or Q and A forum and I will try to answer them. Uh, if you don't have any questions, thank you so much for being in the webinar. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I will send you guys the slides and the recordings uh, soon. Yeah? All right, now let's look at some questions, guys. Okay, question is, what if you know Python already? That's very good. Uh, if you know Python, that is very, very good skill to have. Um, I will send you guys some links. Uh, what I recommend is, we will look at some AI. You can start writing some AI code using Python. So this is if you're already familiar with Python, you can sort of do a little bit more advanced uh, Python more towards AI. And I will send you guys some links um, um, after this, the presentation. Yeah, yeah, very good. So if you're new to Python, so the, the class we are running next week, remember it's a it's an introductory, right? This is like if you are completely new to Python and you want to learn what it is, that's what the class next week is because I'm suspecting most of you probably haven't, have not done Python. So this way we are gonna introduce Python to you guys in a very nice, you know, playful manner. So that's what uh, next week classes. And again, I'll send you the details to you guys. Oh, Scratch, yes, um, somebody mentioned Scratch. The Scratch is a very good environment too. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a sort of a UI environment. You can drag and drop and, you know, write your code. Uh, that is very good, yeah, yeah. Uh, Scratch is a very good, so Tinder is very good, Scratch is very good. So yeah, so these are some of the things you guys can actually um, use to learn coding. Because let me tell you guys this, coding is going to be a very important skill to learn. Uh, in the future, as you guys grow up, you know, most of you are kind of you know, 10 to 15 years old, uh, coding is going to be a very, very important skill. So we want you guys to kind of learn this. And a fun thing, right? Coding doesn't have to be boring. Uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. Um, I recommend you guys learn it. And there are a lot of resources online for you guys to learn, uh, learn coding. Yeah. So check out Tinder, check out Scratch. Uh, if you're a little older experience, check out Python. And um, yeah, there are so much to learn from. Yeah. Um, good guys, so any other questions? So we, you know, we are done with our presentation. We are slightly over our one hour limit. Uh, thank you for sticking around. Uh, if you have, unless you have any questions, um, we are done with today. Well, question is, um, um, how about Java? Hmm. Java is interesting. And I'm telling you this as a Java programmer, right? I, I, I did a lot of work in Java. However, Java tends to be a more verbose language. Python is much more friendly, uh, friendlier than Java. And if you look at Java code and Python code side by side, you'll, you'll, you'll know what I mean. Um, Python is much easier. 
Oh, C, C++, uh, okay, if you, <laughs> so interesting. C, C++ are even harder than Java, right? So if you want to sort of draw like a little, you know, like a little um, uh, flow chart, and here's how it, how it look like. Let me draw it here, guys, all right? So what we are doing right now, right? And also kind of the progress, and you so see this, this is the C, C++, right? And then, you know, they are a little bit more difficult than, then we sort of move to Java, right? Uh, I, I, you know, I, I, you know, I wrote a lot of code in Java. Now I do most of my coding in Python. Because Python has, and you, you will see this when you learn Python, it's such an easy language. And also a lot of the AI work is done in Python now. So definitely I would recommend Python get five stars from me. Right to learn, and if you already have experience in Java or C plus plus, you will pick up Python very very quickly because Python is such an easy language to learn, and that's why we teach Python uh, for young programmers because you know it's such an easy language for you to pick up. Yeah. So yeah, so if you know Java C plus already, um, you are already in good shape. Uh, pick up some Python; you can pick it up very very quickly. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, you guys asked me for some projects for in Python. I will send you some links. Um, I'll, I'll remember them. Yeah. So thanks for asking the question. If you know a little bit of Python and if you want to improve your Python knowledge, um, yes, there are some links I'm going to send you guys. Right. Uh huh. Yes. Uh, what else? So Go is a good language too. Uh, it's a modern language. Um, oh, um, uh, one of you asked me if, I, if you can teach me, help me teach Python. Absolutely, we will welcome all the help. Uh, honestly, I started this class because you know a lot of my friends' kids are home, and we want to sort of you know teach them uh, something new, right? So if you're interested, please send me an email. Uh, you know where you can send, sign up for the webinar. I'll put my email here too, right? I'll actually write my email here. Um, I'll put my email in the chat window as well. Uh, here's my email, guys. All right. If you want to uh, help me um, with this Python uh, upcoming Python class, please, please, yeah, I will welcome your help. Okay. And let me put the email one more time. So the upcoming Python class, remember, it's a free class. It's it's a beginner class, right? That is, you know, if you've never seen Python before, we want to introduce Python to you guys. I think we have, we have three sessions planned. I will send you guys all the details by email. Uh, good guys, any other questions? All right, so thank you for being on the webinar. I know it's a Saturday. Um, I hope you guys found the webinar useful and enjoyed the videos on games. Uh, I'm going to send you guys the recording soon. If so, unless there are any other questions, we are done guys. Thank you so much.